Welcome back. You're watching CNN. I'm Brooke Baldwin. President Trump's visit today to the National Museum of African American History and Culture was his first. Daughter Ivanka went with him and his uh, HUD secretary no uh, nominee, Dr. Ben Carson. Uh, Dr. Carson has an exhibit there dedicated to his historic medical career. Also with the president today, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece, the Reverend Alveda King. Today and every day of my presidency, I pledge to do everything I can to continue that promise of freedom for African Americans and for every American. So important, nothing more important. We're going to bring this country together, maybe bring some of the world together, but we're going to bring this country together. We have a divided country. It's been divided for many, many years, but we're going to bring it together. I hope every day of my presidency, we will be honoring the determination and work towards a very worthy goal. With me now, Paris Denard, CNN political commentator and director of Black Outreach for President George W. Bush, and Keith Boykin, Democratic strategist and former Clinton White House aide. Gentlemen, nice to see both of you. Nice to see you, Brooke. Paris, let me just begin to you, uh, begin with you on, we just heard Sean Spicer characterize the visit as eye-opening for the president. Can you just talk to me? I know you weren't there. Um, several of the members of the administration, as we pointed out, were. What was that like for him? Uh, and why choose that location for the final condemnation of the, uh, the anti-Semitic threats in this country? Yeah, Brooke, I think it was an important visit for the president to make. Uh, because what people forget or what people should remember is that wherever the president goes, he highlights uh, to the world through the lens of CNN. He's highlighting to the world what is important, what he values and what is important to American values. Yeah. So by visiting this museum, he is showing the world and every American that this museum has importance, it has value and you should visit it and understand it. And the link to our Jewish brothers and sisters is profound. It was not by mistake that our first lady visited the same museum last week with, the, uh, with Mrs. Netanyahu, the wife of the prime minister of Israel. And it is important for Americans to remember the, the link that African Americans have with our Jewish American uh, brothers and sisters and the struggle and the painful uh, parts of our past and the joy that can come by looking at what we can accomplish as a people together, united, because in the civil rights movement, Many, many times when you saw people marching, you saw African Americans marching with rabbis, and, 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 and that was a part of our history. So it was important for the president to come there today and to make that definitive statement against anti-Semitism. And I hope all Americans take it for what it was, which is the president saying 100 percent, it has to end and it will end and we have to unite. Keith, to you, and before I get to you, just context. I mean, I think, uh, according to reports, this, this yeah. visit to this museum was on the books some weeks ago, back on MLK Day. You know, that never happened. We know that the president openly sparred with uh, civil rights icon and, and, you know, Congressman John Lewis. He called him all talk and no action. Um, and then that set off this whole firestorm of the president. And, and it was Congressman Lewis who was the brains behind this museum. Uh, and the president did see the exhibit. We just heard from Sean Spicer. He saw the congressman's exhibit. This is how Sean Spicer actually described that moment. If you haven't been there, you walk up this one ramp and they stop and there's two big screens and one of them is, is a video screen and it's a massive jumbotron. Right, and, and we watched the video of John Lewis and uh, talking there and, and describing his um, efforts in championing of voting and civil rights. And, and so I don't, I know the president paused and watched it and listened to it. Um, and, and again, I, I would just go back to how he described his overall. Um, we didn't dissect the different things, but I, I watched him and, and it was a very powerful experience for him. And I know he looks forward to going back. Keith, I, I know there's been no love lost between you and the president, but that said, can you appreciate that he went? Yes, I can appreciate that, Brooke, and I can appreciate the fact that he actually saw the John Lewis exhibit and saw part of the video. I think that's a good step for him. I think he still needs to apologize to John Lewis, who's a civil rights icon. I think he still needs to apologize to President Obama for spending five years denigrating and delegitimizing his presidency and questioning his birth certificate. I think he still needs to apologize to the five African-American Latino boys in the Central Park Five who he accused of, of engaging in a rape that they did not engage in and has to this day not apologized for that. I think he still needs to, to ask for repentance for his housing discrimination policies uh, going back to the Trump Organization when he was 
was engaged in rental discrimination, and the, and the uh, Justice Department had to sue him under a Republican president. This president has done little Harris, to unify this country. Harris, does he need to apologize? Country. Forgive uh, me, Keith. Well, does he need to apologize? I think the president's uh, visit today on Congressman John Lewis's birthday speaks volumes, and I think his actions are going to speak volumes. And so you may have words might mean something to some people, but I want to hear and see his actions. And I believe his actions for this, for my community, the black community, is going to be so significant, especially as it relates to HBCUs, education, and Dr. Carson, who was featured at the museum and her, uh, housing and urban development. He's going to do good things. And so his actions are going to mean more than any words, in my opinion. But, but I think Keith, you get the last word. I think his actions have already illustrated that he has a disrespect for African American African American communities. Not only did he fail to participate in any sort of effort to outreach to us, uh, reach out to us during the campaign, but Not since true. he's been president, his actions have been indicative of someone who doesn't understand African American people. Even during Black History Month, he didn't even know who Frederick Douglass who Frederick Douglass was. Not true. I mean, he he's a part of a party that engaged in an effort to shut down Coretta Scott King uh, to have her words spoken, and his nomination of Jeff Sessions to be our attorney general, a guy who was deemed too racist to be a federal judge, that's an action itself that indicates that this guy is not taking the African-American community seriously. Okay, we've got to go. I know you all do not see eye to eye whatsoever on this, but we've got to have both voices, Keith and Paris. I appreciate you both. Thank you Thanks so much for, for coming on.